Hey everybody, this is my 40 gallon brackish tank and tonight we're going to do another butter bean feeding video but tonight we're going to watch from outside the tank as I talk about brackish water and brackish fish and that sort of thing. So let me go ahead and dump a bunch of snails in there for him. There's even a couple little bit of pieces of algae wafer for my mollies. The one is still all bloated up. Still seems to be acting fairly normal and still seems to be eating despite being all bloated up like that so I don't know what's going on with it. At any rate, brackish fish. The term brackish fish is not completely wrong but it's not entirely right either. It's more accurate to say that brackish is a description of the environment the animal lives in. Um, I suppose you could think of a brackish fish as the type of animal that needs to live in brackish water versus the kind of animal that can live in brackish water. Because most fish that would qualify as brackish fish actually don't live in brackish water. Most of them live in freshwater, and some actually live out in saltwater out in the ocean. So you could think of brackish fish possibly as the type of fish that needs to be in brackish water, like my puffer here and the little gobies. However, the idea that a fish needs to be in brackish water sort of goes against the idea of what a brackish fish is in the first place. What we think of as brackish fish, the term is really urihaline. And urihaline means wide range of salinity. That does not mean the full range of salinity necessarily. That doesn't mean just because a fish is urihaline, it can go all the way from really soft fresh water all the way up to salty ocean water. But it does mean the fish can adjust their osmoregulation through a wide range of salinity and they can swim in and out of saltier water if the tides change, if they swim upstream or downstream. It doesn't affect them. The shifting um, salinity in the water is something that their bodies can adjust to fairly easily. So no fish has to live in brackish water. Just by the very nature of the urihaline animal, they can adjust to a wide range of salinity. So there's no need that they have to be in brackish water. But there are some fish that just do better if they're kept in brackish water or mostly brackish water and then, you know, if you shift them into something different, that's not going to hurt them for a while. But for the, for the big picture, for the long term, there are some fish, like the fish in this tank, that just do better in brackish water. So if we think of those fish as brackish fish, it's actually very few fish that fall into that category. There's maybe six or eight of them in the aquarium hobby, the archers, um, you know, a couple of the different puffers, some gobies, scats, and then of course everybody knows mollies can go in brackish water but don't necessarily need to be in brackish water. But that's about it. There's not a whole lot of fish out there that really are thought of in the aquarium hobby as brackish fish. However, there's a ton of fish out there that can actually go in brackish water uh, without it bothering them at all. For instance, all of the fish that are in my, um, well, I don't know about the Pleco, and I'm not 100% sure about the West African tilapia that is in there, but all the native fish that I had in that tank, all the shiners, all the chubs, uh, the sunfish when I had bass in there, uh, perch, all of the kind of fish that we catch around here and that I find around here in all my freshwater rivers, all of them can swim right on down the river and swim right on out into the Chesapeake Bay and they'd be just fine. We catch rockfish out in the Chesapeake Bay. Of course we know salmon, you know, we don't think of salmon as brackish fish, yet they're renowned for starting out in fresh water, swimming out in the ocean, living their lives in the ocean, and then swimming back into fresh water. And yet they're not thought of as brackish fish and they go from one end of the spectrum to the other. They're most certainly a urihaline animal. They can adapt to changing salinities fairly rapidly. Now, I get it that a fish with a, a life cycle difference might be something a little different than what I'm talking about. But you can think about the bull shark. Uh, bull sharks can swim, you know, thousands of miles inland up, up rivers. They can live for years up in freshwater rivers. So a bull shark is, is that a brackish fish? I don't know. 
Again, the term brackish fish isn't really an accurate term. There's a lot of fish out there that can swim in and out of brackish water. They can go from a freshwater river, swim out into the bay or the harbor, or even all the way out into the ocean, and then turn around and swim right back up into the freshwater river again, and they're just fine. But they spend the vast majority of their life either in the freshwater river or out in the ocean. Very few of them spend a lot of time hanging around in that brackish water. And that's because they're not brackish fish. So I don't really know what else to say about that. Um, I just, I, I hear the term brackish fish all the time. And I know what people mean, and I'm not trying to be the word police about it. Like I said, it's not entirely wrong. It is, you know, representative of the kind of fish like this, you know, puffer here and these gobies that really should be in brackish or very low end uh, or close to brackish water uh, for their long term health. And that's fine. But most of the fish out there that we think of as being urihaline fish don't, in fact, live in brackish water. They actually live in freshwater uh, for the most part and can swim out into brackish water in the bay or the harbor or wherever and then back up into their rivers or whatever. So the correct term is urihaline for the fish and brackish is for the environment. So I'll keep you updated on the health of that molly. Um, the other one seems to be harassing it a bit, chasing it around, but it doesn't seem to be too bad. I've been kind of keeping an eye on it today, so I don't know if it's going to get better or worse or whatever. In my experience, I've never had a fish that was all bloated up like that ever recover from it, but it doesn't seem to be suffering. It's eating and swimming around normally, so I'm going to leave it to it and see what happens. So, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss anything I got coming up, and then don't forget, of course, this is my brackish aquarium. So, thanks again, and I'll see you real soon in the next one.